One of the most important things in the new version 4 software update for the VI consoles is the user-defined input fader page system. And that's controlled from this area here on the control surface. So as well as the fixed fader page buttons A, B and C, we also have user-defined fader pages, user 1, user 2 and user 3. And using this new setup button, we can program these three buttons with any kind of fader layout we like. So we can do things like putting uh, a vocalist's fader in fader 24 on all three of the layers so that fader never appears to move. Or you can just customise whatever you want on those three layers to suit what you're doing. And how we set those layouts up is using the setup button here in conjunction with the Vistonic screens. Okay, so when we press the user defined fader page setup button, the Vistonic screens above the input channels change to this screen. And what this does is it gives us three rows of buttons here one, two, and three. These correspond to user one fader page, user two fader page, and user three fader page. And at the moment, they're all saying that no channels are assigned to them, but all I need to do is go through any of these channels, let's say this first one here, I can open up a page where I can see all of the channels on the desk um, from 1 up to 96 in this case, I can see all the names and I can just say I'm going to have my kick drum here on this fader and there we are, I have my kick drum on that fader, my next fader I can go in and I can put my snare drum and there's my snare drum on the second fader, third fader I can put um, my overhead for example onto and I can keep going along like this and just doing whatever I want to assign onto here. What you can see at the right hand side is I can also choose from VCA groups as well. So not only can I assign input channels to these user layers, but I can also assign a VCA master as well. For example, the lead vocal VCA master there. I can put her along on that layer there. And I can do the same thing for user 2 and user 3. And when I've finished, I switch off the setup button. OK, so now you can see we've got user 1 fader layer and you can see the screen's blank at the end here, that's because we've got two VCA faders programmed onto the layer which is not possible on the previous software but the VCA masters obviously don't have any channel strips associated with themselves. We've got user 2 which I programmed as a full layer and user 3 is completely empty at the moment, we haven't programmed that yet. Or we can go back to our fixed layers, still A, B, C. OK, we also have in version 4 software the user-defined setup for the output bus fader layers as well as the inputs. The output bus fader layers are in this section of the console and they've, they've always been the VCA page and then there's been A, B, C, D, and E, which is another bank of VCAs. What we can now do with the uh, new version is we can program what's on A, B, C, D and E in a similar way to what we can do with the input faders. And we have the setup button at the top here which opens a special page. One of the other things you can do with the new fader page functionality is you can create customised fader pages of these output faders here in the centre section of the console. That's really useful when you want to have a lot of stereo auxiliaries because with the old software each stereo aux takes up two faders in the master page like this, you see they're linked, which isn't very efficient of, of uh, faders. What about if I want to have eight stereo mixes, I can only fit four onto each page. With the new software, and I've programmed this onto page A already, I've got a stereo aux on this fader 1 here, so you can see left and right both here. So that's aux 1 and 2 just on one fader. And then aux 3 and 4, the next stereo one is on this fader. Aux 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, etc. So I've got 8 stereo mixes on these 8 faders, which is much more efficient for space. And the meters are already laid out to have a stereo capability, which we weren't using before on the previous software. So another thing we can do with the customised output faders is not only put stereo auxes on here, but also we can put 
other types of buses or VCAs onto the same page as the auxes. Uh, for example, I can put, um, let's say, a couple of VCAs on the first two faders. And now I've got a couple of VCAs here, and the rest of them are auxes. Uh, this fader here I can reassign, uh, for example, to be groups. Uh, if I put a group onto there, I'll just do that. I've now got a group, two VCAs, two auxes, a group. So I can create any combination of uh, output faders I want. The user-defined output fader page is set up in a similar way to the inputs. By pressing the button above the fader page keys in the output section, you can see that the control base screen changes to this display here. And what this represents is five output fader layers A, B, C, D and E and this is giving the default programming that you that everyone's um, aware of for example AUX 128 on the top, 9 to 16 etc. If I want to change this mapping all I do is I touch any of the faders on layer 1 for example and it's currently assigned to AUX 7 I can reassign that for example to matrix 28 so I now have those three AUXs then matrix 28 uh, the next fader I can assign to VCA if I want to, there. and so on. So I can assign any kind of output bus or any VCA onto any of these faders on any of the five layers.